My name is Elise Wild, and you are listening to Women's Lifestyle Magazine Inspired Voices. In this episode, I'm joined by Philomena Mantala, or as she's affectionately known as, Philly. She's the president of Grand Valley State University, which, like most institutions in our community, have had to make a major pivot in light of the pandemic. Grand Valley has more than 20,000 students, hundreds of faculty members, and they evacuated their campus in two days and moved everything all classes to remote learning. Philly and I talk about uh, her leadership style, how that is serving her in this time of crisis, and what it's like to be a leader of such a large institution and to be looked at for guidance and support and comfort during such an uncertain time. We also talk about the role that institutions like Grand Valley play in our community during crises such as what we're experiencing right now. And we also discuss the potential permanent changes that higher education might see after the pandemic. I hope you enjoy the conversation and I hope you learn a lot. Okay, so let's start off with, um, tell me a little bit about yourself and um, about your background. So I came to the presidency of Grand Valley State University in July. Uh, My whole career has been in higher education. And um, it's exciting to be in West Michigan and be leading an institution the caliber and with the great trajectory Grand Valley State has. And also a university that has been deeply committed to the kind of community partnership Mm -hmm. throughout its lifetime. So really excited to to be here. Um, My university leadership has um, really been honed at a variety of different institutions, um, but uh, really excited to be at Grand Valley. Great. I know West Michigan is is really excited to have you, especially, um, you know, when they made the announcement that you were Grand Valley's first woman president. I know a lot of people in West Michigan were really celebrating that. Thank you. So that's wonderful. Um, So I read that you have described yourself as having a network leadership style. Can you describe that a little bit for us and um, why that's an approach that you value? Yeah, you know, the current moment in time that we're in dealing with this pandemic uh, is, I think, good evidence of why I value this approach. So a network leadership style sort of acknowledges at its heart that there is talent everywhere in an organization. Mm -hmm. And the, the job of the leader is not to sort of control and order the work but to really unleash the talents of the community to, to harness it towards the work. So the style really um, acknowledges that leadership comes out of these pods or networks of um, individuals that are passionate about the same thing mm-hmm. or solving the same problem, and that the hierarchy in organizations are really to find those talents, place them together, fuel their work, and be sure that it is organized within the life of the university's challenges and opportunities. So, you know, I use the pandemic as an example. You know, no one person can manage a crisis of this magnitude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if you embrace a network leadership approach, you really are uh, comfortable with uh, giving people guidelines and uh, enabling them to do their best work in service of the institution and figuring out ways in which the network communicates with one another. So you're really spreading the effort so much Mm -hmm. further, and you're empowering the individuals within it. That sounds really empowering, to to use the word that you just used. And um, it sounds really efficient, too, And as far as getting, um, you know, completing tasks and... um, you know, major work across such a, I mean, Grand Valley is a huge organization. Um, and that sounds like a really efficient way to lead such a big organization. Yeah, it, it recognizes the talent that we have, mm-hmm. you know, and whenever you try to lead through one person or the next day or the next day, um, you're limiting yourself uh-huh. um, at some level. It, it, you said use the word efficient, and it, it sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't, because it ha- it means that a lot of more things are going on at one time. Mm-hmm. So okay. getting used to um, what is some organized chaos uh, around network leadership. 
leadership takes some getting used to for people who are used to working in a very orderly set mm-hmm. and hierarchy. Um, and that's the biggest challenge with it. You have to be have a level of trust. You have to have a level of comfort. You have to have a level of communication. And you have to be willing to take some level of risk because people will make some mistakes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if you have ways to calibrate, those mistakes will generally be ones that there's a great deal of learning from and that aren't crippling. So tell me how Grand Valley has responded to the pandemic and how the university is continuing to support students at this time. So I'm just so proud of the university and and really humbled to serve it and that it has really um, done a great job of just lifting each other and um, staying focused on what we have to do. So when the university made the decision, as many did, to move to remote learning, um, we had people at varying levels of comfort with online learning Mm -hmm. and remote learning. We had very real challenges of things like, um, you know, uh, teacher's education, where you're doing um, work within the school system, or nursing, where you're on clinicals. And so um, we took about four days uh, to make the transition to online learning, two weekend days and two weekdays. And um, we did, we trained about 700 faculty members, uh, again, from where they were and what they needed to know in order to make the conversion Mm -hmm. comfortably in their course. And then we did a lot of problem solving. And so, um, and, you know, without disruption um like all institutions and organizations that have gone remote we were also worried about our technical capacity Mm -hmm. you know um the load that uh, our nation was going to be putting on our system um and we've been able to make the transition uh without any major problems or issues wow that's great yeah yeah i'm really proud We've got our people working remotely and continuing to find new ways to connect individually with our students because that's a real point of pride for Mm -hmm. Grand Valley. It's a very relational university. So um, we don't just sort of wipe our hands and go, we've made the conversion to online learning. Uh, We had to move our students off campus, uh, which was over 8,000 students in an orderly way that didn't impact... um, our public health mm-hmm, by mm-hmm. getting crowds all in small places. And, you know, the university's really stepped up. That's quite a feat. That's that's a lot to accomplish in a short period of time. Yes, it is. So Grand Valley is also continuing to play a role in the community during the pandemic, uh, such as uh, recently donating um, about 90,000 gloves to Spectrum Health and... Um, opening up one of the, I, if I'm remembering this correctly, is it one of the um, nursing buildings to to Spectrum Health for um, uh, hospital overflow? Um, so tell me a little bit about that and tell me about the role that institutions such as Grand Valley have in their communities during a time like this. Yeah, you know, we're so fortunate to be in West Michigan where um, being a part of the community is the way in which people live and work. And so um, there's been great partnerships across the board with public safety, um, working with area law enforcement and uh, Spectrum Health and all our health providers trying to care for our citizens. And Grand Valley comes at it from the perspective of we may have our own challenges, with some of which I just spoke to, but we need to contribute on a larger level. Mm -hmm. So um, we did take our nursing and health professions building and work with Spectrum Health and turning it into kind of a hospital outpost. It's ready to go. We have nearly 250 beds that are um, set up. We're on their electronic record, and um, we're drilling to be sure that if they need the facility, it's there. Um, We've had a lot of grassroots activity. These are not organized activities, just people stepping in um, to do whatever they can in this crisis from, you know, um, 3D printing some of the medical Mm -hmm. devices out of our engineering school to um, donating. 
waving gloves from from our across our health professions and uh, movement science areas. Um, last week, I I asked our community, kind of going back to the network leadership, to let's create some networks of support. We have a huge reservoir of intellect, of mm-hmm. passion, of compassion, of partnerships, and we each have things we can do. And so um, we, uh, I announced the creation of a handful of networks from mental health support to um, small business development uh, support with our business school students who are studying this and can be a, a resource mm-hmm. to individuals mm-hmm. who are trying to figure out how they plan through a period of low or no business and keep things moving mm-hmm. to the time in which they will restart. So we just look at it as, you know, a part of who we are, part of our DNA, part of our responsibility, and we just are, are it's our privilege to find ways to serve. I love that. It's, um, you know, it certainly shows. I, as a former student of Grand Valley, it is a really closely tied to the community. Um, and it seems like the university is really pivoting with the community during this time and just filling in the gaps where it's needed. What advice do you have for other leaders right now who may be being looked at for comfort or for guidance at this time when many of us feel that our immediate, even our immediate future is is unknown. You know, things are changing from day to day. And um, what's that like from a leadership perspective? Yeah, I guess my advice is um, to bring your best people around you on the topic at hand. And so that'll shift the people and players that can contribute the most to a question at hand um, will shift. Bring them around you and um, find efficient ways to get input and reaction as you're making decisions. Um, I think the instinct in a crisis is you've got to move fast, and that's true. Mm-hmm. It's just sometimes sort of narrow the aperture of the lens because the pace requires, you know, uh, quick and decisive um, leadership. Uh, but if you, in fact, find ways to bring them around the, the virtual table in this case, and um, draw the best out of them quickly, you generally will make more of a straight line in your leadership decisions than a jagged line, mm-hmm. you know, kind of going back and forth depending on the decisions that mm-hmm. you've made. And so ultimately it can be the most efficient. So that would be my advice is find good ways, good techniques and tools to bring lots of voices into the decision making and then make a decision and move. That's a, that's a really great way to put it. So a lot of us, a lot of us right now are, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, despite all this, everything that everyone's going through right now and, and all these struggles, um, and the anxiety that we're experiencing, a lot of us are anticipating kind of some positive changes at the end of all this. Um, do you, do you anticipate any, any changes to, to higher education as a result of the things that we're coming up against with the pandemic? Without a doubt, I think there's a new normal coming at us now, mm-hmm. and it, 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 you can't um, ask yourself the question, some basic questions, you know, should higher ed do online learning? Um, should people be allowed to work at some level remote? Mm-hmm. You know, there's some basic things that have been answered for us in this sort of moment of crisis. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, we will now be able to step back and say, where does it advantage us and where does it disadvantage us? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How do we use it differently? And so I, I think that we'll, um, you know, we got to acknowledge that there's going to be an economic disruption in front of us. Yes. Mm-hmm. we got to acknowledge that people feel a sense of, um, of lost control, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, not something you can just wave your wand and change things. Um, and so how we deal with that both um, spiritually and mentally and physically and in our work life and in our personal life, I think things are changed just like September 11th changed us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to say about um, your experience uh, 
leading Grand Valley through this pandemic? Just that it's been a wonderful community and a wonderful um, support system to lead. Um, I don't do it on my own. I do it on behalf of and with the support of a grand community. That was very beautifully said. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. I myself was really appreciative of the insight that Philly was able to give into what leadership is like right now. And one thing that she said that really resonated with me was no one person can manage a crisis of this magnitude. And, you know, that's so very true. And we can really see that playing out in our community. People are really stepping up. People have been responding to the crisis in really inspiring ways that to me demonstrates that whether you are officially a leader or not, we all have ways in which we can lead and we are all, are all responsible to each other. And when we act on that responsibility, we can accomplish incredible things, including getting through a pandemic together. To stay in touch with us, please visit www.womenslifestyle.com and sign up for our newsletter. You can also listen to this podcast on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Women's Lifestyle, all one word. If you have any ideas for a podcast episode or if you'd like to hear from someone we haven't interviewed yet, please reach out to me at E-L-Y-S-E at womenslifestyle.com. That's Elise at womenslifestyle.com. I hope you are all staying healthy and staying safe, and thank you so much for listening.